would like to address a very interesting uh, comment that Mary Papantos made at the last meeting during her official, or maybe it was two meetings ago, perhaps, during her official communications. Um, it, she brought it up in response to a concern that I had had about a lawsuit uh, that that we lost uh, against the Edward County Watchdogs. Um, uh, who had asked for 30 days of uh, data points from the swipe card records of our village manager. And uh, she, she had a very reasonable argument uh, that, you know, she knows he's here very late. And uh, in the corporate world, they'll often offer a uh, flex time. So if you start later, you come, you, you leave later and so on and so forth. So that that could be reasonable in a, in a corporate setting. But my concern for it here in a municipal setting is that uh, – as the top uh, administrative official of our village in charge of the day-to-day -day operations, if he's not here a lot of the mornings or comes in late, then um, it's, it's kind of hard to supervise the staff. So even though he may be able to complete tasks uh, late at night when the building is empty, uh, I feel it's his duty and, and actually his, his job description, uh, which is codified into our municipal code, specifies that his job is uh, – over all department heads and, and all, all divisions. So um, I'm very concerned. I know that uh, with, that our attorney, uh, Mallory Malusi, I sat in on those oral arguments at the Daily Center, and she said that she wanted to confer with her client to see if you were to take it to the appellate court. Uh, I was hoping to hear an answer this evening. Um, my concern is that it was just a 30-day window of time, and, and of course there are many times, as I've said before, where you, you might walk in with someone else and swipe in with someone else, and maybe even half the days out of the month you might be doing that. But if, if there's a pattern of you know 30 days where somebody's always coming in late, um, that 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 I feel like we're not getting the most bang for a buck for our village manager. So uh, that combined with uh, I just did a FOIA request of uh, the the police chief for his uh, video surveillance of him entering and exiting any village building over a three-day period of time, a period of time where I actually interacted with him, uh, with Martin Say, present right here in Village Hall, and the records I got only showed him entering and exiting a garage. And so my response uh, to the village manager was uh, uh, that... You know, I know I was here with him in other buildings, so you haven't provided all the records. And his response was that, well, we're no longer in possession of those. So he has admitted and immediately he, he was duty bound to maintain those records uh, if there's any chance of litigation or being denied. So they provided a portion of them for the same day, but now they're saying that they're no longer available. So what I'm very concerned about uh, with our village, uh, our, our that our police chief, shortly after you hired him, you purchased a couch for his office. So I know that he is a two-time survivor of cancer, and I'm not uh, without compassion for a situation like that. I did go to the pension meeting to see if he participated uh, in the pension system. He does not. He does collect a pension of over $100,000 a year from Buffalo Grove. Um, I, I'm just – I'm not sure uh, how he – he said that we need another deputy chief. I just think it's, it has a, a dawned on you that perhaps he's not able to perform his duties due to his his history of illness. Um, it's not our duty to to, to do compassion jobs uh, for people. Uh, I know that he went to high school with Ray Lang. I don't know if that has anything to do with his employment here, but I, I think it, it, it it's not good optics when you have denied records. The, the court has ordered you to turn them over a 30-day period of time. If any taxpayer has a right to know if he's supervising employees at Village Hall, I think the argument you made against it, it goes against what the judge says. So she said, and if, if we lose this lawsuit, you are responsible for the uh, legal fees for the Edgar County Watchdogs. And if you take it to the appellate court, you're responsible for, for whatever. And if they win there, they're, you're going to have to pay their legal fees as well. So I think that if there's nothing to hide in those swipe card records, then by all, all means, you should release them. And if there's days he's coming in late, then I'm sure that he should have appointments and things to explain where he was at uh, doing his village duties. So uh, while I'm pleased that perhaps he does stay here very late at night and can accomplish the things you've hired him to do, it, it sets a bad example for employees if the boss is out and not strolling in until halfway through the day, a majority of the days. I, I want, it's bad optics because if you deny the records, it gives the impression there's something to hide. I think if you've got nothing to hide, you should release them. And uh, I'm what I'm concerned about is the reason you're not releasing them is perhaps it will reveal, you know, that he's in fact coming in late. The reason why they're saying that uh, J.B. Dunn, they destroyed his records uh, coming in and out. You've admitted in an email to, to violating the Illinois Records Retention Act. 
Anytime you make a FOIA request, they're denied. Anytime there's a potential litigation, you are duty bound to maintain those records. And in one week's time, they've suddenly disappeared. Records, the surveillance you, video Wilson. from the very same day. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Clear water bottle. Thank you. What's that? My name is Barry Gertz. I'm a 35-year resident of uh, Wheeling. Uh, I'm coming before the board uh, and the police.